All right, time to check in with uh, more of our student athletes as we uh, try to make our way through this uh, COVID-19 pandemic as players still trying to stay in shape and ready to go for the upcoming season. <laughs> Quarterback for Utah State, Henry Columbia, kind enough to join us. Henry, how you doing, man? Doing good, doing good. Everything's good down here. So uh, what's life like in Florida through all this stuff we're going through right now? Uh, life like life in Florida is pretty tough right now. You know, pretty much everything's closed. I feel like we're we're one of the main spots. So, I mean, there's really not much to do down here. You know, it's interesting. You see some of the uh, footage that you're putting out and uh, on uh, on Instagram and some other things, and uh, you are looking like you're staying active. And when you've got a coach for a dad, he probably finds a way to put you through the ringer a bit. Yeah, for sure. I mean, having my dad, I mean, it's a blessing down here. You know, we're always getting after it when we can. We have a pretty consistent schedule that we follow. How much has he meant to your career and the development of the player you are right now? Uh, I pretty much owe my my whole career to my dad. He really developed me into a quarterback, into a player, and a young man. I mean, all together, I mean, I, I pretty much owe it all to him. Was that the plan from the beginning, uh, to be a quarterback? Oh, uh, well, so my dad played corner at Ole Miss. So, originally, originally I started off as a little bit of a DB, a little receiver. And then mm -hmm. um, I started to get a little bit too tall for DB. So, there I was. I found myself playing quarterback, and I just stuck with it. So right now, what's a, what's a day in the life of Henry Columbia like? Oh, a day in the life is, you know, I wake up and then um, I, go, I go lift generally. And um, if I'm not throwing, which I do about three times a week, then um, I come back here, I run with my dad. And um, other than that, pretty much just hang out the house with him, play some ping pong, play some, uh, some badminton, whatever we have in the backyard. How difficult was it? with the academics and everything online, I'm sure you probably take a lot of, some of you guys I know take a lot of online classes anyway, but was that an adjustment for you? Um, yeah, so I did have a, a number of online classes to begin with, but being so far from Utah, I mean, it was, it's a lot harder than people may think, even though you already had online classes, just to stay on top of it. Because I mean, you're at home, you, you know, you have all these distractions, so it was pretty tough to stay on top. There are a lot of guys out there that after everybody went home that may not have had access to facilities and weights and things like that. Sounds like you're pretty fortunate enough to, uh, to be able to find some stuff to, to get, uh, get those lifts in. Yeah. I mean, uh, we're really just trying to find whatever we can just to stay active, to stay, um, stay on top of it. And I know a bunch of my teammates are as well. I mean, whether it's body weight, whether they can find whatever they can. So how cool was it to see Jordan go in the first round? Yeah, I was, I was super excited. You know, me and my dad were watching the draft down here. and We were just waiting the whole time, you know. Like, we were just counting down all the teams that might pick him up. And, you know, when they traded up, you know, it was just a great feeling to see him get drafted. It was interesting. I was, I was texting back and forth with some coaches. And when uh, New England came and went and didn't take him, I'm thinking, oh, he might slide out of the first round. And then all of a sudden, Green Bay pops in, and it makes a lot of sense. And, you know, from a quarterback perspective, I mean, you had to kind of wait your turn behind a guy that uh, really was playing at a high level. He gets that same opportunity in Green Bay to kind of sit behind, you know, a, a first ballot Hall of Famer and learn the craft from him. That's got to be advantageous to him. Yeah, I think that's going to be an amazing opportunity for him. I couldn't really see a, a better fit for him to go in there and, and learn from a veteran and then take over after a couple of years. So what, uh, what, what's it been like for you learning from Jordan? What are some of the lessons you picked up from him? I learned a ton of things from Jordan. You know, he's, he's kind of been there with me since the whole time I've been at Utah State. So he's probably the – closest person I've been to you know he's my roommate at uh at all our away games so really just learning from him uh, I think the biggest thing is leadership how to be a leader you know there's so many different ways to lead and you know he taught me a number of that a number of different things with that and then when it comes down to football I mean just um going into college I didn't really know how to break down film you know compared to high school it's so different so you know he took me under his wing and he taught me that and um I'm really grateful for it you know I know you've been probably looking forward to this time for quite some time and knowing that you know, even last year with all the hype around Jordan, you knew probably he was going to make the jump to the NFL. So you've been waiting your time for quite some time. I mean, what does it feel like to know that this is going to be your team? This is going to be your, you, you know, your squad coming up this year? Yeah, you know, it's it's a pretty amazing feeling. I mean, any athlete that, who um realize that it, realizes that it's their chance, you know, it's a great feeling. It's something that I work hard for, and I'm really appreciative to get the opportunity. Is it, uh, is it difficult not being able to be there, you know, throughout spring ball and summer to be able to make that transition as the new quarterback of this team? Um, I mean, I feel like I have a, a great relationship with a number, of my, a number of my teammates, but 
as far as that goes, I think that um, a lot of the guys trust me, so nothing along that line. But the one thing that, that I would say is it's tough not having spring ball with a new offensive coordinator, with a new offense that's being put in, not being able to get those reps. But um, hopefully come summertime we'll be able to get that chemistry down and um, we'll be right where we left off. You know, I know that you haven't had a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one time with Coach Reeder uh, before this whole thing hit, but you did get a couple practices in. From, you know, an average fan going to Maverick Stadium next year, how much is this offense going to look different than what we've seen over the last couple of years? Um, I wouldn't say it's going to look, uh, you know, what's the word? I wouldn't say like a, it'd be a huge difference because, you know, a lot of college teams, they're staying with the spread offense. So there's still going to be a bunch of that. I mean, I, I would say more than anything, it would just be a little bit more balanced um, running the ball and passing the ball. But I mean, it's still going to be an exciting offense. Um, fans are going to be thrilled to watch it. Are there going to be opportunities for you to show off the mobility a little bit too? Yeah, there will be some opportunities to show off the mobility. <laughs> Maybe some respect in the run game. There you go. There you go. Uh, also, too, you know, from a standpoint, I know you've got some receivers back that you've spent time with, that you've worked with a little bit. Talk about that receiving core and what you expect out of them this year. Yeah, so, um, you know, we have a ton of big receivers, you know, especially the guys that are coming back. Jordan Nathan. Yeah. He's a veteran guy. He can play wherever, outside, inside. You know, then we have Devin Tompkins, who's just electric when he has the ball. You can really use him in any way you want. And then you have Savon. You know, he's a special teams receiver guy. Then, I mean, we signed a bunch of guys. Um, we have a Juco receiver coming in named uh, Justin McGriff, a Florida kid. Um, I actually had a chance to work with him while I was home. And, you know, he's going to be special. So I think that um, speaking on the receivers, you know, tight ends, Carson Terrell, things like that. I think that we just have a ton of weapons that if we can distribute the ball evenly, then it's going to be pretty dangerous. And you've got a uh, young offensive line that kind of came together last year. Now those guys have a year under their belt. Uh, you get back some guys like Koch that was uh, that got beat up a little bit last year, and now he's healthy and ready to go. I got to imagine that offensive line is ready to take another step too. Oh, yeah. Just, I mean, getting that whole year last year of experience was pretty big for them, you know. I feel like we have a, a young but super talented and strong offensive line, you know, led by Alfred Edwards, a left tackle. He's played a ton of football, and I'm really excited to see what they can do this year. You know, I know you haven't had a lot of time to get out on the field, but uh, any particular moments uh, that you – you look back on that were some of the highlights. I remember the trip to Hawaii where you played a good chunk of that game. Uh, it was one of my favorites seeing you in action at that high level. But what are some of your favorite moments so far? Um, well, of course, probably my favorite moment so far would be my first touchdown as a college quarterback. It was against UNLV in my, uh, my freshman year. Uh, it was like a, probably like a 40-yard run or something like that. Yeah. And, then, and then last year I had my first passing touchdown versus Stony Brook. Um, you know, my parents are super excited. People that I'm close to, they're super excited. And, you know, just hearing the crowd go crazy when I threw a touchdown, it was pretty, pretty memorable. So do you, uh, do you anticipate kind of a stranger season this year with, with COVID or do you not pay attention to that stuff and say, Hey, look, whenever they tell me to play, I'll be ready to go. Um, yeah, I think uh, most of our mindset is just, you know, we'll be ready whenever we get to, whenever we get to nod. I hope that it doesn't like, they're talking about fans not being in the stadium. I hope that none of that happens. I hope that we start on time. But I'm sure that whatever whatever solution they come up with, we'll be ready for it. How excited are you to get back and uh, be around these guys again whenever that happens? Yeah, I'm super excited to get back. You know, a lot of those guys are some of my best friends. I have uh, great relationships with them. So I'm excited to get back with them and just um, get back to ball. Is there a element of leadership to be able to – because, you know, during summer, there's not a lot of times that coaches can be around you guys, but, uh, but, but it's up to you to kind of lead the team and get some workouts in and stuff like that. Uh, how important is that for you guys to get back on campus? You can kind of show, like, hey, you know, I'm a leader and, and it's time to get to work. Yeah, I mean, due to the fact that we are uh, pretty much a player-led team, a bunch of the guys started to step up during uh, spring ball, being leaders, being more vocal. So I think that um, as long as we just stay on top of each other, and hold each other accountable, then um, we'll be um, all right when it comes to summer. Well, Henry, man, we appreciate it, man. Can't wait to see you out on the field. Can't wait to see you back on campus. And uh, look forward to uh, seeing what 2020 holds for you. Thank you. I appreciate you having me.